Hi everybody, welcome back to the Renaissance Woodworker. I'm your host, Shannon Rogers, and welcome into my shop. I'm gonna do a little bit of saw sharpening today, and I've got this new little filing guide from Veritas that I wanna test out. A friend of mine sent me his Veritas dovetail saw, and he was having a little bit of trouble getting it started. So I'm gonna alter the tooth geometry a little bit on the front of the teeth to make it easier to start. And to do that, I'm gonna alter the rake of maybe the first 15 to 20 teeth. And this little filing guide will come in real handy to set that exact rake angle. Then to show off some of the other features like the fence that sets the fleam angle, I'm gonna go ahead and resharpen my Lee Nielsen carcass saw that's kind of in dire need of a sharpening. So before we get too much further along, let's take a close look at the file guide and the different functions and features and how it all works. The Veritas saw file holder is really just a guide. It won't push your file one direction or another. It's up to you to do that, but it provides reference surfaces that act as a guide to, to literally guide that file. First thing, the saw file runs into this little collar here and it's tightened down by using an Allen key set screw. You loosen the little brass knob on the bottom and it allows this collar to rotate. And we have a little veneer scale on the bottom that we can use to set down to one degree increments the, the rake angle. When you get it set, you tighten this up and it locks the saw file and that aspect this little handle back here that you can grab with your thumb, this, when this is level, your saw file will be at whatever angle you set on that veneer scale. This fence up top is what's used to set the fleam angle. And when you loosen this little brass knob, this moves back and forth, and there's a scale on here that allows you to set it in five degree increments. Once you set that fleam angle where you want it, you lock that down, and then when you hold the whole guide like this, you've got this fence that you can work off of and you line that so that it's parallel to the plate of the saw you're sharpening and you will be filing in the fleam angle that you've set on here. So with this dovetail saw, what I wanna do is alter the tooth geometry a little bit of probably the first 10 to 15 teeth. And I'm gonna relax the rake. Again, the rake is the this angle on the front of the tooth. When I relax the rake, it's gonna allow the, the teeth to kind of slide over the wood a little bit easier. It's gonna make this saw just a little bit easier to start. It won't be quite so grabby right out of the gates. So I'm gonna first drop the saw in my vise here and lock that into place. What I wanna do is alter the rake angle of the first probably five to 10 teeth to 15 degrees. I'll then probably scale it back to about 10 degrees for the next 10 teeth. So I've got a progressive rake angle on the way back from the saw. So I need to set, <clears throat> first of all, I need to change the fleam angle to zero. This is a rip saw, so I want no fleam at all on it. So I'll set the fence so that the zero mark lines up with a hash mark on the holder itself and then tighten down the brass nut. Now this fence should be perpendicular to the saw file. Now I'm gonna loosen up the bottom and set the rake angle to 15 degrees. If you wanted to set the rake angle to zero degrees, in other words, a vertical file, a vertical tooth, you'd line up the zero with the zero. But we wanna set this to 15 degrees. Each one of these hash marks is set 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So I want to move the zero on the collar over to 15, 5, 10, 15. And then I want to lock it in from there. Say I wanted to set it in one degree increments from there. I would look at the veneer scale on the collar itself. And let's say I wanted to do 17 degrees. I want to continue twisting it in this direction. I'll bring the zero mark up to 15, and then I wanna move, go over two from the zero. And I wanna line that up with the nearest hash mark on the body and lock that in. 
So now I brought the zero over to 15 and then I counted back one, two on the collar and slightly twisted it a little bit further in the same direction to line it up with the nearest hash mark. That puts it at 17 degrees. Now I want to set it at 15 degrees. So I'm going to back this off a little bit and just line the zero up with that third hash mark. Now I'm at 15 degrees. If you look close, you can see how this second degree hash mark on the veneer scale is not quite lined up with the nearest hash mark on the body. And that's the difference between 17 degrees and 15 degrees. It's really minute, but if you think about it, in rotating this, one degree is such a tiny amount of rotation. And that's why we have this veneer scale in here to help us make you know, really, really minute adjustments. So now with the fleam angle set to zero and the rake angle set to 15, I just take my file and I slip it in here and I'll tighten it down using an Allen key. Now the saw that I'm sharpening is a 15 points per inch saw. So I'm using a four inch double extra slim file here. I'm gonna start at the toe of the saw and I just came in with a Sharpie marker and I marked the 10th tooth and I marked the, I just arbitrarily marked the 18th tooth. So I'm gonna to file the first 10 teeth at 15 degrees of rake. If I grab the file guide and this nice kind of contoured handle here, and I hold that parallel to the bench top. When I set this in, I now have the saw file, the face is angled back towards me at 15 degrees. So as long as I keep that vertical, or as long as I keep this parallel, which grabbing it with your thumb like this, it's very ergonomic with your arm kind of resting on the bench top. It just kind of naturally holds it at that angle. The fence here is set to be parallel with the plate or at zero degrees rake. So just by eyeballing the relationship of the fence to the, the saw plate, I know that I'm filing at zero degrees of fleam. Now I'm just touching up these tiny teeth, so it really is only gonna take one pass. Okay, that's the first 10 teeth. And the only thing that you really, that this guide is not helping you do is maintain level front to back. And that's what we would call like sloping gullets. When you angle it forwards or back, you're actually angling the, uh, that gullet. That is just really a matter of sighting down your line and holding it perpendicular to the saw vise. It's really not that difficult to come up with. The key is to position your body in such a way that your arm can move back and forth without a problem. And you know, it's kind of like sawing. If you align your arm so that it moves freely, you're gonna end up with a straighter saw cut. So now I'm gonna angle this back a little bit, change the angle to 10 degrees. So I'm gonna move this back just a bit so the zero lines up, the zero on the collar lines up with the 10 hash mark on the body. It's ever so slightly different. Now I'll come back to the tooth where I left off. Again, holding this parallel, keeping this parallel, keeping the, the fleam fence parallel, and holding the body itself parallel to the bench top. And then there's the next eight teeth that we have there. So now I wanna finish out the saw. It's a minute amount of steel that I've removed here, but I have removed a little bit of steel. So in order to keep them kind of all even, I'm gonna bring 
the, the rake angle to zero. So I have zero degrees rake and zero degrees of fleam. In other words, a classic rip tooth. So now when I grip this and I hold it parallel, I can look at the face of my file and I can see that it's straight up and down. It's perfectly vertical. I just work my way down the entire saw plate the rest of the way. And as I said, with these tiny little teeth, it only takes one pass of the file to get this nice and sharp. Now I know for a fact that this is the first time this saw has been sharpened. And generally, most of the experts I know say you can, you only have to set the teeth after each second sharpening. So since this is only the first time, I'm not really altering the set very much at all. So I'm not going to bother setting this any further than I have it now. Of course, the test cuts when I'm done filing will be the true indicator as to whether or not I need to do any further setting. I'm just going to move my seat down a little bit so that I continue to keep my arm aligned. This is really extremely comfortable and it makes every single file pass repeatable because of the way you grip the, the guide with your thumb on top like this. You're just automatically holding it level and you've got a great reference surface here with this fence. And that finishes up and I've got nice sticky sharp teeth with a progressive rake angle. I don't know if we can white make that out, but you can see the rake angle of the teeth here, and then it changes ever so slightly right there to a little bit more vertical. And then as you come back, you see how the teeth go fully vertical at that point, and they stay vertical the rest of the way. Let's test this saw out and see how it cuts. I'd say that's a pretty easy start. There's very little effort to get it started. There's no need to kind of do a starter kind of backstroke to get it, to get a curve started there. It just glides through the wood. And as we move past these initial raked teeth, we get into the more aggressive rib teeth in the back so it cuts very aggressively. So the idea being that once you get it started on your line or whatever angle you're looking for, the majority of the work is done in the back kind of two-thirds of the saw and that's where your speed of cut comes from. It's definitely tracking really straight, starting precisely where I want it. It's cutting nice and smooth and square. Can't really ask for more than that. Good sharp saw, ready to go back to work, piece of cake to start it. This is my Lee Nielsen carcass saw. I've had this for, um, many years now. 
Couldn't even tell you how many times it's been sharpened, but I do know the last time I sharpened it, I did reset the teeth. So I'm not gonna have to set the teeth on this one either. And frankly, that's um, you know a topic for another video. But this is 14 points per inch. So I could use the same four inch double extra slim file that I used on the Veritas dovetail saw, but I actually can cut a little bit more efficiently if I use a five inch double extra slim. It's not, uh, it, it kind of perfectly fits the gullet. So you don't have that much room to kind of play around, but it also allows you to keep up with the same rhythm of one file pass and your teeth are sharpened. It just doesn't give you that much space to get it exactly right. So if you're relatively new to sharpening, stick with the four inch double extra slim. This is actually what Lee Nielsen recommends as well, but I've sharpened this now a couple of times. I feel pretty comfortable at the five inch double extra slim. So now I need to set the rake and the flea mangle on this to match what I already have here. Now, if you know what it is, you can, you can set everything in place, dial it in on the fence, the fences rather, but honestly, I don't remember. And the last time I sharpened this, I didn't have this holder. So it might be a little bit different than what I'm dialing in here. And I don't wanna remove any more steel than I have to. So rather than setting something on the fence and setting something on the, the rake angle adjustment here, I'm gonna drop the file into the teeth gonna let it match that tooth geometry. Then I'll loosen the rake angle adjustment on the bottom and twist it around so that this is parallel. And tighten that up. So I now have the rake angle set. Now, I'm gonna drop this in so that I've got mimicking the fleam angle. I'm gonna loosen up the adjustment on the top and just sight down and move the fence on the file holder so that it's parallel with the plate. Then I can tighten that up. So what it looks like is I have about maybe 12 to 13 degrees of fleam and I have about five degrees of rake. Now, because I have fleam angle in here, I can't saw every single tooth. What I'll want to do is only hit the teeth where obviously the, the fleam angle is moving off in this direction. Now with everything set, with my rake angle and my fleam angle set, I'll grab the handle on the end to make sure that I'm holding at that rake angle line my fence up with a saw plate, make sure I'm starting on the right tooth and just saw across, skip a tooth, skip a tooth again, and just work my way down, working every other tooth. And just every time I make a a file, as I push forward, I just want to double check that I've got all of my alignments right. This fleam angle fence is just fantastic being able to keep everything straight.
I'll move my chair over again to keep my kind of my shoulders aligned properly. And this is a classical cross-cut filing. I'm not playing with any kind of progressive rake or fleam angles here. So that finishes up those teeth. Now I can adjust the fence and I can move it back the other direction or I can turn the saw around and file from the other side. And people that I trust when it comes to saw filing tell me that this is a little bit better because just like sharpening a chisel or a plain iron, you are leaving a small burr on the back side here. So if I sharpen from both sides, I'm leaving a little bit of a burr on both sides of the saw. So it's not going to want to tend to drift to the left or drift to the right because that burr is grabbing. So once it's turned around, the fence, the fleam angle of the fence matches, but the rake angle does not. So there is going to have to be some adjustment made. So I can flip this over and I can look down here and see that I'm at right about five degrees. So if I loosen it up and go to five degrees on the other side, now I'm angled properly to work my way down the saw plate, skipping other tooth and hitting what I haven't already filed. So the file is angled the proper direction for the proper rake and it's angled the proper direction for the fleam. And if you are trying to match an existing tooth geometry, you can pretty much tell by the sound. If it's a good smooth push, you're matching what's already there. If it kind of jumps about and it stutters, then you probably have got something not quite right or maybe you're on the wrong tooth and you're grinding against the fleam that's already been set. As you get closer to your body, make sure you're keeping this fleam angle right and you're going to have to adjust your body again or you're going to want to tend to drift off of that line. And that's it. We've hit all the teeth and again just touch the saw and you can get that cool kind of sticky sharp feeling. If I look down here I see nothing but shiny teeth. I've hit everything. I've matched the existing fleam and rake angle to the saw. And this really kept me aligned. So now let's test this thing out and see how it cuts. Okay, I've got a piece of walnut here. I've got a square line marked out on it and my bench hook and Let's see how this thing cuts, how efficiently and how well it tracks the line. Well, it starts real easy. And boy, is that sharp. You can just feel how the saw glides through the wood. And this is Peruvian walnut, so it's, uh, it's pretty close to the hardness of, say, uh, hard maple. And I've got a perfectly square cut in this direction and dead on my line in this direction. So when I check it, I'm square and square. 
and or importantly, the quality of the cut left is really quite smooth. This saw is basically cutting exactly the way I want it to cut and just the smoothness of it. It's definitely a sharp saw. Love it. So I've got basically a brand new carcass saw and what I think is a much better performing dovetail saw. I'll send this back to my buddy Sean. And really it's made dirt simple with this little saw filing guide. Again, as you saw, it's not actually pushing your file in one direction or another, but it gives you plenty of reference points. Every time you stroke forward with the file, you can check your rake angle and your fleam angle and you end up with a very consistent saw. And the proof is in the pudding. You saw how well these saws cut and I'm really happy with it. Up till now, I've been using little blocks with holes drilled into them. This not only allows you to dial in what you're looking for, but it also makes it repeatable going forward. So I can actually make note of the settings that I've done here for each saw and I can reproduce it. Or as you saw with the carcass saw, you can just drop it in there and set the guide to the existing geometry. So you're removing very, very little steel. You get back to work really fast. You saw me sharpen both of these saws in real time. That's all it takes. So um, as far as the ergonomics of it, it's really comfortable to hold. When you hold it, the, the way it's comfortable to hold, you actually hold it in line how it's supposed to be. The little knobs, they, they tighten up, they, they loosen relatively easy. What I like, what I was a little concerned about with this knob on top is when I tightened it, it would adjust the fence with it, but it doesn't. It keeps its settings really, really well. Um, I did find that it's best to put your settings in on, on the guide, then plug in the file. It's a little hard to, it's kind of off balance when you've got a file in there when you're trying to set it. So put, lock in your settings, then lock in the file. Um, you know, in case I didn't explain the whole veneer guide very well, this holder, it comes with its own instructions and you know, they're detailed with pictures and everything like that and explains it really, really well from there. So um, if you've been at all worried or, or anxious about sharpening your own saws and maybe ruining a saw, don't. This really takes a lot of the guesswork out of it, allows you to very accurately create the tooth geometry that you're looking for. So buy some saws because it's really easy to sharpen them now. Thanks for watching guys, we'll see you next time.